up to oh, no, don't <laughs> send it to Zen. <laughs> Just clip that bit. <laughs> I don't I don't like Zen. Clip. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, something I wanted to talk about today was um so I'm gonna be changing up my uh <clears throat> just my philosophy of VTubing because my goal um this entire time has been to make enough money from VTubing that I can quit my the, the job that I hate. And I needed, let me let me check how much I needed. <clears throat> it was like 700 a week. Sam Mao's dad. I should have this bookmarked. I don't have this bookmarked. Economics of being a dog. Where is that? I, it's not there, okay. Um. Sorry, that's one sec. Here we go. My goal this year is to earn enough from VTubing. Yeah. My goal this year is to earn enough from VTubing. Let's just scale this up a bit, huh? Let's see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, earn enough from VTubing and associated activities to quit my job. Um, I actually have two, yeah, I have two day jobs. Uh, one's at night. Um, that's the one I wanna, I wanna stop. Um, so um yeah and when i wrote this um a lot of people don't like talking about their numbers and that's pretty fair you know because eh, that's just a western culture thing maybe other cultures too but uh people don't like talking about exactly how much money they've got and how much they're earning that sort of thing but um i sort of want to be open about this and i think that makes me more accountable so if if i'm not doing something everyone can tell and that means i know i need to fix up my stuff um uh, yeah, so, okay, so, yeah, I, I crunched the numbers and I need 565 Australian a week to survive. All up. Uh, going independent is pretty hard. It's good God have. Yeah. Oh, man, it's, um, well, I figure it out at the bottom here and we'll get to that. You need a lot. You need a lot of uh, followers and stuff. If And this is strictly from streaming. Um, this doesn't count extra stuff like YouTube revenue um, or any other you know, sponsorships or anything like that. This is, this, this uh, article talks strictly about uh, Twitch subs. <clears throat> yeah, so the bare minimum I need to live is, uh, 565 Australian a week. Um, and yeah, we, we earn, we earn uh, more than that. Um, but that, that's the absolute bare minimum. Um, and yeah, the job, the amount of money I want to replace is 490 a week. Hey, Bar, how you doing? Oh, you said hello at the start, didn't you? Oh, that's right. I have a new emote I put in. Where is it? Uh, this one. And I moved the, the cards emote up to the uh, the top tier. It seemed like a little less useful. And I didn't have anything on top tier anyway, so I just chuckled around. Um, yeah. So, boo 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 boo. Yeah, so let's let's just uh, this article just assumes that we want to replace four hundred ninety dollars a week uh, with VTubing, right? We just want to go, okay, take this job, quit that VTube instead. Um, yeah, and Twitch takes a uh, flat fifty percent out of any earnings plus conversion fees and stuff like that. So you usually get from Twitch any money that comes in, you usually get less than fifty percent, which really sucks. <clears throat> um. For small streamers, tips, donations, uh, you can't count on it. Um, some, it, it depends entirely on your audience. Some streamers can count on getting lots of tips and donations uh, if they want. Um, like uh, like Koopa, she always gets uh, tips and donations every stream. Um, I don't, it's pretty rare for me to get tips and donations. And I mean, my audience is a lot smaller. Um, so I imagine that scales with your audience, but um, it's not really a consideration for me. Um, <laughs> investments like merch. Yeah, um, there is extra stuff. And that also counts on extra stuff like merch um, and selling music and that. That depends entirely on having a user base as well. Um, 
So really the only thing that you can guarantee, like one, like you can, you can say, I will get this much money with this much user base, um, is memberships or subs. Um, everything else is just really up in the air, especially for me at the moment, because I don't have, um, I've never sold merch. I've never sold any of this extra stuff. I've never gotten a, um, a, uh, an advertising deal or anything like that. So I, I simply do not know how much money that can bring in. Um, and people don't, don't talk about it, you know, okay. Or well, how much money, you know, how much money per, per viewer, per average viewer do you get from, from merch? Who's going to, who's going to say that? Um, you know, how much, how many sponsorships do you get? Um, based on how many, your average viewers, like no, no, simply nobody, simply just, they're just not going to, don't, not going to talk about it. Um, so it's very, very difficult to get anything. You can't even assume. Oh, I would love, I would love a mouth breather plush. No lie. That would be so good. Look at, oh, hang on, let me, let me grab him. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. How good would this be to have a plushie of, right? It would be so good. And a little top hat and little cards sticking out. <laughs> I'd love that. I would love that so much. Um, let's just pop him back in. He can sit on my lap. Mouse but I've been thinking about um, <clears throat> thinking about doing my own tarot set at some point in the future. Um, that that would be really sick. Ah, oh, don't turn me into a marketable plushie. <laughs> This is going to be the second time on this stream I've said that. <laughs> One day I'll definitely do my own tarot set uh, at some point in the future. Whether or not that'll be uh, VTubing related or just personal, I don't know. But it will be at some point in the future. Tarot is um, important to me, I suppose. Hmm. Um, yeah, so that sort of stuff I can't really factor in um, yet at all. Um... I don't even think Cooper's talked about, or she's she's briefly discussed merch one time, I think. And she's got way more average viewers than I do. Like it's it's just for for like really small people, and like you know even someone like um like Cooper who gets uh, oh I'm not sure how many average viewers she gets. Let's say Nina. Nina gets like you know 80, 90, 100 average viewers. Even even merch for her is just not in the cards yet. Um, if you're super aggressive with it, you could probably pull it off. But me, especially at the moment, um, like my, my, my highest average viewers was like 30 something and I've dropped right down recently. Um, and merch for me at the moment, nah, unless it was not specifically Mao related and it was like clever by itself could probably pull it off, but Mao related merch. No, no dice, no dice, unfortunately. It's wacky to think that Cooper is now considered a pretty big video. Well, the thing is, she's not. Like compared to uh, most, like 99% of indies, yeah, she's huge. But um, you have to consider that someone like uh, Iron Mouse is a big VTuber. Someone like, um, oh, let's let's not count Hollow Life. They're, they're a different tier, they're corpos. Um, Independent VTubers, indie indie VTubers. Um, I guess Iron Man isn't technically independent either. Let's say let's say let's not count VTubers who are who are born from corporations like Hollow Life and, and Niji Niji Sanji and that sort of stuff. Um, because Iron Mouse was a, was a VTuber before joining V Shoujo, and I think all of them were before joining V Shoujo. Um, so like you know, like Indies in quotation marks. Um, yeah, Cooper's not. Yeah, she's like you know, she'd be like top three percent, but she's not like top one percent. I think she will get there. She's not there yet, but I can see Cooper getting to be big at some point. I think what she she needs she just needs like a couple of clips to blow up. Um, she's, she's, she's got steady growth from what I've seen. Like, I, I don't know Cooper's numbers. Um, I haven't asked for her numbers and, I, and I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm not in, in literally every stream. So I don't see like, you know, her average and YouTube's, YouTube's tracking is always a little off anyway. 
<clears throat> um, so, but she seems to be growing steadily. Um, so I can see her becoming big at some point. Like, you know, um, yeah, maybe even Iron, Iron Mouse big, you know. She, she's got it in her for sure. Um, and I think she just needs a couple of clips to pop off. And then in six months, you know, in six months, even without that happening, she'll, she'll have a couple of hundred uh, average viewers. If it pops off, I can see her with a thousand in six months to a year, easy. Um, especially once uh, Hololive Gen 2 comes out, English Gen 2, because there's going to be a second wave of people interested in VTubers. Um, so if Cooper keeps it up, for sure, she's going to be she's going to be big. I don't understand. Look, um, this is this isn't a um, a dump on Zentraya. I don't get Zentraya success. There are some there are some people where you look at them and you just like that was a niche, and that like that's that's a credit to uh, to Zen for finding that niche. Um, that, that some people like I can't I don't even know that that was a niche there, but Zen Zen found it and fucking dominated it. Oh no, don't <laughs> send it to Zen. <laughs> Just clip that bit. I don't. I don't like Zen. Clip. Damn it. <laughs> Can stop losing. <laughs> I'm gonna be the one guy that inadvertently shits on every major streamer, and all my clips get taken out of context. You can make a lot of money doing that. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. I think. I think Zen sucks. <laughs> Um, yeah, so boo, 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 membership sub. So yeah, so this is the main way to make money off of Twitch itself. If you're making money off your personality, off your brand, it's a fucking useless way to make money. But when you're just starting out, what else have you got? No one's going to buy merch. No one's going to give you ads. Yeah, there was the VR chat boom, then the VTuber boom. Um, a lot of people got really big streaming VR chat. I believe Zen. Zen Treya got big streaming VR chat first and then switched to VTubing. Um, which is actually the same as Izzy Mouse, which I, I, although I do believe Izzy Mouse still streams VR chat, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah. So um, when, when, you, when you're um, a 10 viewer Andy as... Um, Oh, sorry guys, I forget names all the time. Um, who's that dude? Is he still going? Yeah, he's still Ludwig. Ludwig calls uh, calls people ten viewer Andy's. <laughs> if you're a ten viewer Andy, the only way you're making money from Twitch is membership subs. Um, so that's the what I had to consider to begin with. Um. Until I make, until I get big enough to have an audience. Um, Izzy Mouse um, did something really interesting, right? So Izzy Mouse made full-time living off of 60 viewers um, on Twitch. And this is before the boom as well. Or, or that may have been during the, the VR chat boom, actually. Um, so... He just knew how to play the game so well that um, that he could make full-time living off of 60 viewers, which is fucking amazing. They simped a lot, but he knew how to make them simp that much, which is just wild. Like, I, I just can't believe that. Um, so you can, if you know what you're doing, you can make money uh, in unique ways, even based on the existing systems. Um, but for the sake of this article, um, subs were like sort of the only thing I considered. Um, and yeah, ads, um, the amount, so you get, uh, you get peanuts from ads. Um, so you need a really large fan base and then you're, you're going to make more money from everything else anyway. It's just, it's sort of gravy on the top. You're not going to make on Twitch itself. You're not going to make anything from ads. Poor me, I will start grieving for you now. <laughs> okay. So if you want to get a goal amount of 565 Australian a week just from streaming, the only thing we can count on for now is subs. Right. Hey, Maddie, how you doing? Good to see ya. Um, sub payout is monthly, not weekly. So um, you need to multiply that by four. Um, so 
And, and as, as an affiliate, we lose half the money to Twitch straight off the top, and then accounting for fees and conversions, I get about two ninety five Australian um, for each sub. So I would need uh, six hundred and seventy six subs in order to cover the job I want to quit, or seven hundred and sixty to fully cover all my expenses. So at the time, my um, okay. So I have. Um, 18 average viewers, 16 subscriptions, and where's my, my followers? How do I, how have I lost my followers? And 430 followers. Um, so subs and average viewers is pretty much the same. Um, followers is iffy. I'll take that. Um, so yeah, from my experience, subs and average viewers have always matched basically they've basically been the same um although if you wanted to give some give some subs now would be a pretty good time huh? 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 wink wink is this gonna can we wink can we... no we can't wink <laughs> um yeah so i think i do believe that this ratio is completely different for each streamer um because it depends on how well you can, you know, get your audience excited about subscribing. Um, some people do it better than others. Um, you know, you know, the people that get like really over the top and excited and there's loud noises whenever someone subscribes, that works really well, really well. That's how Izzy Mouse could make so much money off of 60 viewers. Um, um, and some people don't do that as well. Um, so this, this absolute, this ratio would absolutely not follow for everybody um so even even finding out every, I, I i didn't want to ask everyone else's numbers but even if i did that'd be pretty useless because it would just be all different um so i think it's a bit higher i think it's about 15 one to one now so i would need a lot more followers i probably need like 10k followers um 10k followers and 600 about 700 viewers on average to quit my job it's a bit, bit daunting, a bit daunting. Um, and yeah, and so I just go on to say that this this article doesn't count other things coming in. So you know, no, you know, re ad revenue from YouTube video, uh, maybe putting music on uh, Spotify or whatever. Um, if you sell art, I don't. But if you did, um, then you know, revenue from that, um, ad revenue from blogs. But see, what you can do is when you start having stuff like this coming in. So say you've got, you know, say you stream, right? Um, and you also make, and you also make music and you also write blogs, right? So imagine there's a VTuber who does that. So then um, you would have cross pollination between each of these pillars. So say someone finds your blog and they really like them. Well, then they might just come and watch your streams. Say someone is watching your streams and you talk about a music video well, then, you know, they're going to go watch it. And so you can uh, double dip with viewers um, and doing that. And that's, 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 that's basically what merch is. Merch is almost exclusively a double dipping thing. You'll have someone that subscribes to you and you'll have, um, and you'll have, uh, and they'll, they'll like, they'll want your merch. They'll want your, your key ring. They'll want your, um, your plushie, you know, that sort of stuff. Merch is almost exclusively for double dipping. Um, Um, boo, 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 boo. but yeah, so it, it comes down to this. Um, you can't be a streamer because streamers don't make money unless you're like the top 0.001% and you have like a million subs. Um, so you have to be a content creator, which is, you know, it's a big meme word these days. It just means that you make shit that people want to pay for. <clears throat> um, yeah, V creator doesn't have the same ring to it as VTuber. But yeah, so that's, that's something that, and, that's, and sponsorships, again, are one of those things that you can leverage the more viewers you have. So it's sort of like when you're just starting out, you can't really factor it in. Most of this stuff, you need to have an audience and then multipliers. So tips and donations, multipliers, ads, multipliers, uh, sponsorships, multipliers. Um, and memberships and subs are sort of the meat of it. But yeah. But yeah, so that was 
The reason I talked about this was this was my mindset this entire year, basically. Um, and if you want, if you want VTubing to be, a, if you want, if you want something to be a job, you have to, you have to work at it like it's a job, right? So you have to work, you know, 30 hours a week on it. But the problem was I'm already working two jobs. <laughs> Marketing is everywhere, but it seems smaller YouTubers get bashed when they do it openly. Yeah, it's it's because it makes you seem like you're only in it for the money. But even if you're not in it for the money, you sort of have to advertise yourself just to get viewers in general because you want people to watch you. I think people that bash that bash you for doing it aren't people that are going to be watching anyway. That, and that's something that's sort of tough to keep in mind, but it is important to keep in mind is that a lot of the people complaining, openly complaining about you, usually aren't people who are watching you anyway. But you have to be able to filter out complaints that are from people that watch you. Um, hey, guys. Another goes for every content creator, really. Trying to grow and get seen as thirsty or in a th Yeah, it's tough. I have plenty of you musicians in small towns, put up flyers and community boards. Community doesn't passion for it. Yeah. I guess that's a little bit of a different situation because it's like this, this is for, um, this is for advertising. And the problem with, um, the internet is that the difference between places to advertise and places to chat isn't much. Because if you have like a notice board, nobody checks it out. Like, you, you have those those threads on you on uh, on Twitter that are like um, that are like oh yeah put put your put your PNG here and then other people will check you out. Nobody checks you out. Does anybody look through those lists? Nobody looks through those lists. Iron Mouse was actually <laughs> Iron Mouse is a funny exception to that. <laughs> but but you know yeah, like just nobody does. So I don't, I don't interact with those threads at all. The only time I did was, was Iron Mouse. I used to when I started VTubing until I realized that nobody actually cares. The person starting the thread half the time won't even check out all the people in that list. Oh, I'll retweet you. If you follow me and put your PNG in this thread, I'll retweet you. So? People will follow you and then mute you immediately because they know they're going to get spammed with 50 notifications about people they don't care about. <laughs> Yeah, and there is there's a big difference between IRL and online advertising. If you have like a community notice board online, who's going to go look at it? Nobody cares. They're going to find people that their friends talk about. And that's where like 99% of online advertising comes from is just people talking about it. So like notice boards just don't work. They work IRL, but they don't work online. So you have to be, you have to be able to sneak in your advertising in a way that doesn't seem like advertising, which is why people dislike it when they can see it, because they assume that you're trying to trick them, even when you're not, even when you're being open about it. You can straight up say, like, um, there's not many places where into, like small people starting out can get, can advertise themselves. There just isn't. And it's really tough um, for most, for like 90% of people. Um, I was really lucky and a lot of my friends have been really lucky that we sort of had a community that um, will give us the time of day and will check us out. And if they like us, then they are willing to, to patronize us. Um, and I'm never going to forget how lucky I was for having that because I started out um, before finding that community, I was uh, just sort of grinding by myself. And the only people watching were like a couple of other VTubers that I knew. And, you know, they were, they were great people, but it's like, I don't want my audience to be VTubers. I want my, my audience to be viewers because I can't make money and I can't expect other VTubers to, to stick around because they're doing the same thing I am. And I, I, I can't expect them to do it because I know I can't do it. Um, like, I do, I do appreciate everybody coming in and checking me out for sure, but... You know, there is there is a difference between a VTuber watching a VTuber and an audience and a viewer watching a VTuber, if that makes sense. Um, so it's really tough when you're starting out, so, especially now when there's such a huge explosion. Even before that, it was tough. 
Um, unless a person inserts you into their content and advertises you, you're not going to see any tangible. Exactly. And um, see, that's the difference between Iron Mouse doing it because she turned it into content, which is very smart of her. Like her checking out, like I was, I was under no assumptions that she was doing it for her own content. And I'm fine with that because I got exposed to 4,000, 4,500 people that I wouldn't have been exposed to either way. And I got like, I got a few follows from that, but a lot of people know me now. A lot of people saw my stuff. And I'm very happy about that. So people that wouldn't have seen it otherwise. And, you know, she made a lot of money off of that content. And that's fine. That was the deal, you know. Well, no no one going there was under any assumptions that that wasn't the deal. <laughs> and the problem with a lot of those um, those threads on on Twitter that's like, oh, yeah, put your PNG here and I'll, and I'll promote you. It's like they're made by people who have, like, you know, 10 viewers as well. So it's like, what, it's, it's not worth your time to write a tweet in response to that. It, it is literally not worth your time to do it because nobody is going to see it. And the people that do see it don't care. I think the difference is that Iron Mouse actually exposes these VTubers to an audience. Yeah, it is. Like, it's, it's a complete, it's, it's night and day. It depends entirely on who's doing it. Yeah, I feel battle for sure. The point of those PNG threads is to advertise. Oh, it is. It is. Hey, look at how good I am. I'm helping people. I have 200 uh, followers on 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 Twitter, and don't ask how many people actually watch me. Um, but I'm going to um, I'm going to promote everybody here. No, doesn't matter. Is it still promotion if nobody actually watches it? Like, is it? Like, if no, is if literally nobody's actually going to interact with that tweet, is it still promotion? If the only if the only like and art retweet you get from that is um, the person who started the thread, does it count? I don't think so. Most of my experience from advertising comes from YouTube or music. There's this mindset like this person is small and they're my baby, and I don't want them to blow up because then they'll be big. Interesting. Um, I have heard a little bit about that, like, uh, for VTubing as well, because people like that personal connection. And obviously, when you get big, that personal connection is, is well, impossible to maintain, um, depending on how big you get. Like, with Iron Mouse, um, it must be very difficult for her to um, have any sort of connection with individuals in her chat. Um, you know, 4,000 people watching, you know, 100, 100 comments a second. Like, what can you, like, what can you do about that? If you go back to India, musicians' songs, they're flooding older songs with those comments. Ah. Oh. It's unfortunate. You think that if someone truly supports you, then they want you to grow. Like the, the VTubers I watch, um, and I guess it is a bit different indie musicians. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it is a bit different for me as a, as a fellow VTuber than a viewer. Um, but um, I want... I want my friends and the people that I enjoy watching to go as far as they want to go. Like I want Cooper to succeed. Um, like I want, I want Cooper to get as big as she wants to get. I, I want Nina to get as big as she wants to. Get. I want, you know, I want all my friends. Um, I want Bunzel, Bunzel to get as big as he wants to get. Um, <laughs> you know, if they want to go for Hollow Life, then I want to. I want them to get into Hollow Life. Um, and that's part of. And you know, there will come a time where if they do get that big, then they're not gonna have, they're probably not gonna have time to talk with me again. And that's sort of something that you have to accept. Um, because my mindset has always been, I want people to flourish as much as they can. Um, Hollow Live, fish, fish in Wednesday, Hollow Live, and you invite the different, different hollows on. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Mm. It is a bit of a hard thing to come to keynote because I've made some I've made some really good friends and it's gonna be you know and you know the same would happen for me. Like if I got if I you know if one day I have four thousand people in my chat, then it is gonna be difficult for me to maintain these friendships I've already made. Um and that's sort of unfortunate, but that's sort of uh how it goes. And yeah, I really don't like that mindset that oh they're mine and they have to stay exactly the same. Because what happens when you get bored of them? You know, people, you, you get bored of people, it, it happens. 
So they can't stay the same. Even if they wanted to, they couldn't stay the same. So you should want the best for them. And if the best is them exploding, then that's what you should want for them. Even when people are unpopular, they still have to have friends. Those people shouldn't like cut you off. I have pals with 200k followers and still find, oh, that's nice. Yeah, like, you know, I'm not saying that, oh, the moment Cooper, or the, the moment my friends get big, or if I get big, we're just going to cut contact. But like, you know, if someone is uh, big enough, like, you know, if someone is in a hollow live, um, compared to like an indie VTuber like, like me, um, they're going to have less time in the day to fuck around, you know? So, so I'm not saying like, you know, oh, I expect them to cut off all contact. Oh, and that's true. It, it, like I said before, it is a bit different when you're, when you're a viewer as well. Like I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'm discussing people that I usually talk to directly, but like, you know, if you're a viewer in their chat and you don't, you know, have personal uh, conversations with them, it is a, is a bit different. Although, like um one of the one of the biggest VTuber uh VTuber, the biggest streamer I watch regularly is a guy called uh Otsdava. Otsdava. He is a um he's a Dead by Daylight streamer. And he still recognizes and calls out um OGs from his chat that have been that have stuck around the entire time. From when he was like a, a 10 viewer Andy back in the day. Um so you know it's not it's not impossible. It's difficult and you can't, it's difficult to form new connections with viewers. Um, but you know, it's, it's not like you'll, you'll automatically lose old connections. So. Like with people in Hollow Life, I, I can't imagine them forming connections with their viewers, like, like with, with individuals. And that would, it would also be unfair to everybody else in the chat as well. You know, cause I get like, you know, 10,000 people watching them dick around in Minecraft. You can't have a connection with one person in there. That would be unfair, even if you could physically do it. <laughs> so they're in a they're in a really different situation. It's a really cool feeling when biggest streamers rec it is. It is. Yeah, your best bet is knowing someone when they're small and stick around to be consistent. But most people know others as chat. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like uh, you know, um I've been watching uh I, I literally just said his name. Ludwig. I've been watching Ludwig recently and like, you know, he, he has like 20,000 people watching him sometimes. Um, and all you can do is refer to them as chat. Um, you know. Ludwig's big. He's one of the big boys. Heavyweights. Have you come for my guidance or my soul? Guidance first. To put it simply, life is suck. The living fears death until it is too late. That is how the mind works. But when life does not have a time span and turns immortal, it is more a curse than a blessing. It is torture for the soul. There is nothing to do with all this time. After thousands of years, you become docile. You become mute. There are so few things you can do in a physical form. It is almost like a cruel joke. And you must take great strides to become the realization of what must be done. Do you understand what I want? Do you understand I want 